Hello and welcome to Toy Polloi 2, the spin-off channel to my main channel, Toy Polloi. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how I go about using Photoshop to touch up and repair old sticker sheets so that I can use them in my restorations. And the vehicle we're going to be working on today is the Mask Switchblade from Kenner. Now I've already found a scan of the sticker sheet used for this toy. This came from a website called Mask Force. They seem to have quite a lot of scans of uh, the uh, mask sticker sheets. Not all of them are in great condition, but they are all a good start point and that's the one that we're going to be using today. As you can see this scan is not particularly high res, in fact the scan they have is only at 100 dpi which is not really good enough quality for using on toys. So what we need to do before we even start repairing this sticker sheet is to scale it up and to do that I use a bit of software called Gigapixel AI. You can bring in any piece of artwork and it will scale it up using AI so you don't just get blurry pixels, it actually uses some processing and some algorithms to regenerate the artwork and make it look a lot better. Better. The end results are not perfect but they're a very good place to start and it certainly makes it a lot easier of a job if you run it through this software first. So here you can see the original scan. If I zoom in you can see how pixelated and low res it is. And now I will reveal the scaled up version run through Gigapixel. And you can see that it's done really quite a good job of tidying it up. It's not perfect but it certainly makes quite a big difference to it. And it means that a lot of the work that I would normally do by hand of redrawing things I now don't have to do because the overall effect is very nice and a very nice place to start from. Looking at the original scan, you can see that actually when this was stamped out in the factory, the stamp lines are not lined up with the artwork underneath. So if we look here at the uh, left canard panel, you can see that the uh, piece that is cut out is nowhere near where it should be. So I'm going to have to do quite a lot of uh, work to get this all lined up again. And the first thing I need to do is to create a mask using these original cut lines that I can then position where they should be. And then we can go about tidying up the artwork. So to do that, I'm going to create a new layer in Photoshop. Shop. On the right hand side under the uh, layers panel I'm going to create a new layer and then I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool to uh, make my mask. Basically I'm going to use this tool to uh, work my way around the edge of all of these cut lines and just fill it in uh, with a solid colour and then once I've got them all done I can then uh, move them around and actually line them up to where they should be. So you can see there I've selected one. I'm just going to infill that with a colour just so that it's very clear to see where it's done and then I will deselect that and I will move on to the next one. I'm only going to be doing uh, one side of it because obviously the other side is a mirror so I can just flip that over. So I've just got to work my way around all of these ones on the left hand side until I'm happy that I've uh, got them all as they should be. And then we can uh, use those cut out shapes to make a mask and then start tidying up the artwork underneath. For this middle seat section where we need a rectangle with curved edges, I'm actually just going to use the rounded rectangle tool. You can set the radius of the curves on the corner. I think for this we're going to need about 18 pixels and then I can just quickly make a shape that matches that pattern like so. Now you can see I've made half of the masks on the left hand side but they don't actually line up with the artwork because as I say this looks like it was cut out wrong to start with. So what I can do is just move these around till I get it to what I think should be the right position. In fact I'm going to make this layer slightly opaque so that I can see through it and then that should give me an idea of where these things actually line up. I'm just going to move it using the cursor keys and get it so that it looks about the right position. So to me that looks like where it should be. So now we can mirror the parts that we need. So I'll just put this back onto 100% opaque. I will cut and paste it so we've got the duplicate. I can then use the uh, transform under edit to flip it horizontally and we can then line up the right hand side as well. Make sure that that looks like it's in the right position because again these all look like they're slightly off uh, just by a small amount. In fact it looks like these are out by quite a bit. I might have to move these individually to get it to uh, line up nicely.
now that we have this layer created, we want to use it as a mask so that we can hide all of the bits that we don't want to see of the original image. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to fill it with white. So we basically have a white layer. I'm going to then drag that layer under the cutouts that we've made there. I want those cutouts to be in black. So I'm just going to uh, select black. I can select the lock layer function so that then when I fill it, it just fills the bit that we have made. I'm then going to merge those two layers together. So I will select both and do control E, which merges them together. So we've now got one layer with these black markings on it. I'm going to then create another new layer. So we have another new empty layer, which I will fill with white. And on this layer, I'm going to create a mask. So down on the right hand side on the layers tab, I'm going to create a mask. I'm then going to go into that mask by pressing Alt. I'm then going to paste the image that we have just created into that mask layer. Now, if I go back to the main layer, you'll see that this has created a nice mask and we're just left with the core bits of the image that we want to see. And then if I hide the low res version of the scan, we get to see the gigapixel version and you can see all the areas that need to be repaired, all the lines and these miscut parts that were on the original stickers. So we have now got something that we can work with. To fix the errors in this image now, I'm going to be using the clone stamp, which is here on the left hand side. What you need to do is above the uh, layer that you want to fix, we need to create a new layer. I'm then going to do zoom in so I can see where some of the errors are. And using the clone tool, I should be able to uh, at least fix the worst of these. Basically, if you uh, press the Alt button, you can select the area you want to clone and then you move it over to the bit that's damaged and you can draw on top of it. And as long as you're very careful with how you do this, you can get rid of most of the errors. It takes a little bit of practice and it will take a fair amount of time because there's quite a lot of these uh, bits to fix up, but I don't think it should be too much of a problem. And I think this should be all I need to do uh, to fix the bulk of the issues on this image. So that's not looking too bad. I've tidied up the worst of it. There are some areas that look a little bit more awkward than others, especially on this sticker here. And because that is just going to be a duplicate of the one on the right, I will end up just copying this one on the right and flipping it over to match. So uh, let's do that now. So I'm just going to duplicate the background layer and then merge on my new cloned pieces onto that. Then I'm going to grab the bit that I need, which is uh, this small section here. I will cut that, I will paste it, and then again, I'm just going to flip that horizontally. And you can see that this is all behind the mask layer, so I can move it around behind the mask and then just line this up. So I want to make it uh, match the uh, right hand side one and get that looking right. So I just move that around until I'm happy. There we go, that is that uh, sticker fixed. Now the rest of them are not looking too bad at all. There's a little bit of an error on this sticker here as well. You can see where the gigapixel scaling up has caused it to go a little bit mottled. So I think we should probably uh, do the same with that one. We'll just uh, grab the version on the right hand side, which looks quite nice. I'm just going to select that one. Again, I will copy, I will paste it, and then I'm going to flip that horizontally 
and then I will move that over and then that fixes that error. Sometimes with Gigapixel it does do some strange things while scaling up and it's best to uh, try and fix those if you can. So I think that is not looking too bad at all. The worst bit though is this Venom logo. That really looks quite rough so uh, we need to fix that. So let's do that now. Luckily with something like this there are lots of reference for the actual Venom logo. So all I've done is I've downloaded a version of the Venom logo much bigger. You can see here again this was found just using Google Image Search. That is a nice high res version of the logo and we can use that to uh, recreate this small version here. So we're going to use the magic wand tool to select this image. So I'm going to set the tolerance to about 40 and then just click on the white areas and it should uh, pick up most of this quite nicely. There are going to be a few errors but we can tidy that up later. So I'll select all the white areas. I'm then going to invert this and do control C which will cut the uh, main part of the image that we need. I can minimize that and we can go down here to the Venom logo and I will paste that in and you can see how massive this uh, logo is that I've uh, managed to find. It is really quite large. I can now start to scale that down and make it match what we've got there. It's just going to be a lot uh, neater if we do it this way. Trying to redraw something uh, like that it's just not worth the effort especially if you can easily find another version of the logo somewhere. So I'm just going to zoom in again on this. I'm going to make this new version of the logo slightly transparent and then again I will scale it a bit more and we can line this up as close as we can to uh, this original version. It may be that it's slightly distorted so let's just uh, get that lined on there. That's not looking too bad. So if I now make it again uh, fully solid that doesn't look too bad. It's got a white outline on the original one so I'm going to go up to the uh, layers tab and choose layer style and do stroke and that will put a line around the edge of it. We want to set the colour of that to white. You'll see there are a few errors that's just where it has copied extra pixels from the original image. So if I set that to about five pixels looks right. I can then just get the eraser and we'll go around and remove those error pixels that we don't need and just generally tidy it up a little bit. Also I can see that the original doesn't have the TM on there so I'm going to remove that TM so it looks as close to the original as we possibly can. That's not looking too bad at all. Let me hide that and look at the one behind. I think the white line is possibly a little bit thick so we'll go back into the layer style and we'll knock that down to let's say three pixels. That looks good. Now I'm going to create another layer behind this new logo that we've put in because I want to redraw these uh, colour blocks. So I'm just going to use the uh, dropper to pick the colour there. That's the orange colour. I'm going to uh, make a block and we'll paste that on. So there's the solid colour block. I'm going to hide that layer. I'll make a new layer. Again I will use the dropper just to choose the sort of purpley pink colour. I'll make another block which is that colour there and I'll fill that in. And now if I unhide the uh, orange block you can see we've now recreated that Venom logo and it looks a lot higher res. There's still a few little areas I can see that are a bit wrong so I'm just going to tidy those up with the eraser. But that looks a whole lot nicer. I can then duplicate that onto the other side and we'll have two nice Venom logos. We're now starting to get somewhere with this sticker sheet. It's looking good and it's looking a lot tidier. On my sticker sheets I like to put a grey line around the edge of all the stickers. I find that helps when you print them. If you were to print it just like this where it's the sticker on a solid white background when you come to cut it out you end up with a very obvious white line around the edge of it. If we add a grey key line around all of these images when you print it out that just tends to hide the uh, whiteness and it helps I find when you come to cut them out. So I'm going to duplicate the uh, top layer we have here which is the mask that I created earlier. The one that hides all of the extra data that we don't need to see. So if I duplicate that just one time. I'm then going to go into the mask and I'm going to invert that so that we have it the other way around. So you can see we've got now a white set of cutouts on a black background and you'll see that when we come back to the main layer that's now hidden everything. If I choose a colour that is uh, 128 grey so all the numbers of the RGBs need to be at 128. I will fill the main layer with that 128 grey and then I can turn this layer mode from normal to overlay and it looks like it's disappeared. Basically nothing is happening now with that layer. But again I can go up to the layer options and choose layer style and I'll add the stroke onto this again. 
you can see we've now got a black outline around all of the uh, stickers that we've created and I'm going to turn that into a grey outline just by choosing a nice grey colour, a sort of mid grey and I think the outline doesn't need to be 26 pixels, it needs to be a little bit smaller so I'm just going to scale that down like that. It's at this stage I want to try and make these stickers look a little bit more like they are printed from a factory. So we want to add a colour half tone to them. When you run the uh, scans like this through Gigapixel, it tends to make everything look very flat. It doesn't look like it has been printed in a factory using a half tone printer. So what I'm going to do is collapse these three layers together, the ones that we've worked on or done all of the clone stamping on. Then I'm going to duplicate that layer so that we have a copy of it. We can zoom out and then if we go into filter and pixelate, one of the options here is color half tone. So the smallest radius you can set that to is four pixels. So I'm going to set that to four pixels and then click OK. And this will put a color half tone over everything. At this stage, it looks a bit rough, as you can see. It basically puts dots everywhere and nothing looks particularly good. But if we now take that layer and just knock it down to about 10%, you can see that it's added a few dots to uh, the image and it makes it look more like it has been printed in a factory. Some people don't like this effect. I have to say I really like it because it just makes these stickers look a little bit more realistic. So you can see here we've got dots over everything. You can do this as much or as little as you want. But for what I do, I like this effect. That now makes these stickers look a lot more realistic. Obviously, we have now lost all of the text that was on the stickers originally. So I'm going to duplicate the very first layer, which is the background layer, which was the original image that we ran through Gigapixel. So I'm going to uh, do Control A and Control C to cut that. I'm going to go above all of the layers we've created and paste that on. So you can now see this is back to how it was. And then I'm going to set this layer to multiply. I'm going to then adjust it a bit to knock the brightness up so that it's uh, white. The background color should be white. Now we can see the text. And then the boring part is I'm just going to get the eraser and I'm going to erase all of the original stickers so that we're left with the text on top of our newly edited stickers so that people can still see the names and the numbers of all the stickers, but it will have our nice new stickers left behind it. So a lot of erasing to do, but it makes it so that people can still see what each sticker is supposed to be. The final thing I like to do to my images, because I'm going to be putting them on toyploy.com for people to download for free, is add my details and watermark. So I just create some new layers with all of those in and put them around the edge. This is because I've seen quite often that people take my files and then try to resell them on eBay and places like that. And I don't think that's fair as I give these away for free. I think they should always be free. So I try to make it a little bit harder for people to uh, try and resell them when they should be available for free for everyone to use. So there you go. That is how how I go about tidying up a sticker sheet scan to uh, make it usable for my restorations. As you can see in this instance, it wasn't too much work. Sometimes there's a lot more work involved because things have to be redrawn from scratch. But other times like this, you don't need to do a huge amount. It's just a bit of touching up and tidying up and you can get something that looks really quite nice with not much effort involved at all. So I hope you found this first Photoshop tutorial interesting. I will be doing more complicated ones in future. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and if you've really enjoyed it then head on over to my main channel Toyploy and check that out and make sure to subscribe as well and thanks for watching. <laughs>